Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look at the week ahead. And that is the week starting Monday, October the 12th, 2020. So clearly this is a week of real intense energy. Not only do we have a new moon in Libra, which um, kind of tie is tying in to the whole Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Capricorn energy. And it's also opposing Mars. So what we're getting is Sun in Libra opposite retrograde Mars in Aries, squaring this funnel, this T-square, which is where we find Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. So that is like it is, it's like a funnel. It's like a massive channel there. It's almost like the whole year we've been waiting for this moment in a way. This is the, the, the sort of climax in many ways. So um, that that's all happening in a week where Mercury's going retrograde and we have another background noise of Venus and Virgo. When the moon comes in to touch Venus and Virgo, there's a loose earth grand trine there. So there is this, which I referred to last week as well, there is this background sound here. There is another note, if you like, but it isn't powerful enough to detract from the intensity. And I think there is going to be a big difference this week with regard to how we as individuals can deal and channel this energy, because obviously as individuals, we have much more freedom and more autonomy and make choices. So on an individual level, I think it has a lot of potential, but I think on a collective level, it has potential to be extremely dangerous and to be, uh, yeah, the kind of powerful energy that's involved is, is pretty intense. So um, first of all, um, I'm gonna sort of like have some general thoughts on the week. I mean, the week starts, of course, with a Jupiter, the last of the three Jupiter sextiles to Neptune. So there's a big message in here as well, because don't forget when the Venus in Virgo comes into opposite Neptune, she's gonna pick up on that Jupiter as well. So this is a kind of um, a message of keep the faith. We have to keep the faith when times are like this. We have to keep in touch with our inner integrity and we particularly, and that's what I'm gonna talk about next, we have to really stay in touch with our own feeling nature, with our own, that current in ourselves, that, that emotional feeling based um, source of everything really in ourselves. We have to keep in touch with that. So yeah, we're coming in last Jupiter, Neptune, sextile on Monday. Keep the faith, stay positive, whatever. And there's lots to be positive about actually on Monday because we also have Sun, sextile, Moon. We have Moon, trying Mars. We have Mercury, sextile, Venus. V the Moon, sextile, the North Nodes. So what a lovely backup to that Jupiter, Neptune, sextile there. It's got a whole chorus of singers behind it saying, yeah, this integrity sharing, this kind of empathy this more connected we're all in this together let's help each other out you know that that sort of positive energy in the collective we get so little of that these days that we really have to look to our own community which is very much the moon I see a lot of good things going on around me in my small world and I'm sure you do as well Virgo is very much you know the small world so a great start to the week. But then as we um, come closer into the uh, to, to Wednesday, for example, when we get the sun opposition to Mars and then shortly afterwards we have Mercury going retrograde and then the moon in Virgo opposite Neptune in Pisces. Yeah, we can really sort of start now to feel the increase in tension here. So what have I written here? Yeah, so it's also a double-edged sword. On the one hand side, there's this incredible buildup of tension, which is the legacy or the, you know, the, the, the strength of the T-square, cardinal T-square as well. It's looking for action. It's looking for ways to express itself. It's very expressive, duerach, sort of, speaking Dutch again, sort of energy, right? So we, it's the, the double-edged sword quality here is there's a lot of tension with it. It's explosive. But there's also a lot of focus here, if we can channel it, if we can use it. So there's an increase in focus here, focus particularly with the planets all in Capricorn on our longer term goals, on where we want to be, what are our ambitions. And we don't have to even have huge ambitions, they can be as big as you like, 
but to keep that focus and to use that energy to focus on that area that you know of your life maybe where these planets are transiting for example so massive t-square to jupiter pluto saturn so it, like i said the whole there's a lot of events coming together here and there's definitely a sort of a raw energy it's an earthy energy you know and earth you can, it's tangible you can touch it so this is why i said this could in the collective manifest as events you know things happening and what kinds of events yeah with sun as well square pluto this week um, you know, we're looking at, am I right, is the sun square? Yeah, the sun square Pluto on Thursday. You know, these can be things like, you know, leaks of some sort or, you know, like, um, you know, who is the boss? There's something deep and dark here. There's a, a, an attraction to power, certainly, but it's a sort of life or death signature. Sun being the life giver, Pluto ruling this other subterranean realm. So there's a kind of a clash of where does the power lie? Who's got authority here and leaks and 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 and, and nasty um possible false news stories or malicious gossip or things of this nature which are aimed at undermining authority or undermining our faith in authority so as we get into this you know this big t-square when you get a t-square it's like a three-legged stool right so we're missing the fourth leg and the fourth leg is the space, the empty space, which is opposite those Capricorn planets because they are the forming the apex of this T-square. So what's on the other side of this, the coin there? What's that empty space? Of course, it's Cancer. It's in, in, in Cancer. So, you know, the questions we have to ask and keep asking ourselves, I think, this week is, what am I feeling? You know, what are my emotions? What, what emotions are being invoked in me or evoked in me what's happening on my inner level on an inner level so staying in the feeling and capricorn allows things to freeze over and to crystallize so it's a moment that you can look at what's going on on a feeling level and touch it and see it and smell it and eat it and mm, live with it and rise above it and do something else because in in dutch we call the grand cross which is then you know we're looking at or what we're trying to create by this focus on the feeling uh, life we call it the artist's cross there's that ability to create something here to rise above to find that center point and to rise above and look at the chaos below in a way and not get too sucked into things so yeah very tense week sun square pluto thursday and then on saturday we see, uh, well, Friday as well, that new moon, that new moon in 23 degrees, 53 Libra. So, yeah, it's, 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 that's when it's like the whole week is drawing up to this, I think. Sun square Saturn on Sunday, challenges to authority, um, you know, sort of uh, an ability to overthrow the king, if you like. There's, a, there's this definite sense of, you know, events in the collective um, you know, leading a life of their own and, and, and anything can happen kind of energy. Venus opposite Neptune on Sunday, which again, though, it's kind of that Venus is picking up. It's offering a way out to all those planets that are in Capricorn. It's, it's a different energy. It's a different way forward. Great for women and uh, women in politics. Women can have this other voice in the room at the moment. But a massive, massive, massive week. That Mercury going uh, retrograde as well in Scorpio. So there's an inner, there's an inner quality to it, a strong focus on the inner life and the need to keep the faith. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic week and work that T-square. Get into that empty space, that feeling stuff, you know. I'd like to finish actually with um, a poem which has come to my mind a few times. I'm only going to read the first verse of it but I recommend you to visit it. It's called The Second Coming, and it's by the Dutch, uh, sorry, the Irish poet, William Butler Yeats. The Second Coming. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the centre cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosened, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are out, sorry, are, 
are full of persistent, of passionate intensity. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Sorry about that. I can't read my own handwriting sometimes. That's dreadful. But I really recommend it. The second verse is all about the second coming. Fantastic poem. Sorry for getting it wrong at the end. How frustrating is that? Okay, but have a great week. Bye.